Whenever you make a call or send a text, your mobile phone uses radio frequencies. What are radio frequencies? Well, they're actually a form of energy that moves in the shape of a wave. That's why we also call them radio waves. The scientific term is electromagnetic radiation. And while that sounds scary, it surrounds us all the time. In fact, the heat from our bodies is radiation. Scientists organize these waves along the electromagnetic spectrum. Low energy waves are at one end, high energy waves at the other. Energy levels are determined by wavelength, which is the distance between crests. The number of crests in a second is measured in hertz. The more hertz, the higher the energy. The radio frequencies used in wireless networks are low energy, moving at about one to two billion hertz, or one to two gigahertz, and we've been using them for more than a hundred years. First in broadcast radio and television, then in mobile phones, Wi-Fi devices, baby monitors, garage door openers, and many other household devices. The light we see around us, the visible spectrum you learned about in school, is actually a much stronger source of energy, oscillating about a million times more rapidly than radio waves. Up to this point, the energy is called non-ionizing, because according to international scientific consensus, it doesn't have the energy to disrupt cells. At about 2.4 million gigahertz, the energy becomes ionizing, which means it is powerful enough to affect DNA. This can be harmful, but it also has some valuable uses, like X-rays or radiation therapy to treat cancer. New 5G networks may use high band spectrum, a name that's caused some confusion. While higher frequency than spectrum used in 4G networks, it still relies on low energy, non-ionizing frequencies, up to about 70 gigahertz. The scientific consensus is that there are no known health risks from all forms of RF energy at the low levels, approved for everyday consumer use. Following a review of the expert opinions, the FCC recently concluded there is no evidence to support that adverse health effects in humans are caused by exposures at, under, or even in some cases above the current RF limits. Indeed, no scientific evidence establishes a causal link between wireless device use and cancer or other illnesses. For more information on radio frequencies, wireless networks, and health, visit wirelesshealthfacts.com.